All right, guys, what's growing on? So beautiful Sunday morning here in Pensacola. It's my last day here, and um, I just pulled up to my guide's house, and she has an edible landscaping company also. And this is Renee with East Hill Edible Gardening. And this is not your typical, you know, food forest, or I guess it could be your typical food forest, but this is a, a front yard food forest. This isn't like that permaculture mullet. So hold tight, let's go find Renee. So North Florida food forest and I'm seeing bananas and moringa and sugarcane. I mean, we're up in Pensacola. This stuff's not supposed to be growing here. Whoa, some 20 foot bananas over here. So this is a front yard food forest. I'm taking it they don't have an HOA, but obviously you could tell it's, you know, very, lots of curb appeal, pretty nice looking landscape. Let's see if we can find our guide around here. Look at these bananas. Whoa. Rack City, hey, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, we can grow bananas in Florida. Are you hanging out in the banana pit? Well, this is my mulch pit, actually. I throw a lot of my um, excess plants and growth and stuff like that in there, and it helps feed the bananas. Also gets rid of stuff, and the uh, neighbors can't see it, so it's pretty cool. Uh, my name is Renee Perry, and uh, I own East Hill Edible Gardening. Um, this is Pensacola, Florida. So um, I, you had mentioned you do edible landscaping like me. You don't have um, a lot of time for your front yard. Yes, I don't. So um, I grow a lot of things that sort of take care of themselves. So we have a lot of plants here that um, I didn't plant this year or that I planted and just sort of didn't do anything else with. And so they've sort of taken over, and I, I let them do their thing. Thriving on neglect, I'm too huh? busy. Yes, I'm too busy to, to tend to them uh, uh, the way most people would so but they seem to be doing all right wow so we're like barely in Florida still and you're growing bananas yeah well, we're actually really close to Alabama here Pensacola and uh, we're growing bananas and we're not the only ones a lot of people around here are growing bananas and doing well with it um, so this is a it was called a dwarf Brazilian may not be and then over here we have a Namwa and that was producing before they do pretty well they definitely grow really well um, I'm probably not doing my part to um, thin them out fertilize them and water them as much as I should, but um, they're still producing. Cool. What zone are you all in up here? This is the upper part of zone 9A. So you're barely in 9A. We're barely in 9A. If you drive up, oh, maybe 10 miles, you're in zone 8B. So we're at the street. I mean, you guys are growing food in the front yard. This isn't yep. very common. We have a quarter acre and we're trying to use every bit of it. Um, as my husband just said, I'm a plant hoarder and uh, I got to find places to put stuff <laughs> as part of it. But um, here we have longevity spinach. And uh, that grows great. Um, you basically can't stop it. I have to. I have to actually cut it back sometimes. It's not invasive at all. It just sends out these little things, but it's not actually attached. It probably, if it had soil, I'm sure it would attach. Beautiful ground cover. Yeah. Ones. Oh yeah, it does beautiful. Fills in and doesn't get too high. And then we have Okinawan spinach. Um, the longevity spinach is is it's edible. It's good, but I think it's used more medicinally. Um, but the Okinawan spinach is um, beautiful and You prefer very that tasty. one for eating? I do. You do? Okay. I do. This one, I liken it to carrots. I think it tastes like carrots. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a beautiful plant to grow. Um, it um, does really well. Same, it's very, um, it's the same genus as the longevity spinach and it grows very similarly. And I've actually grown the longevity spinach in the ground. Put, I put it in the ground. I've got a patch over there that I put in the ground like two years ago, just before winter in the October. And watered it in, you know, gave it some compost, watered it in. Haven't done anything to it for the two, last two years. I haven't gave it compost. I haven't watered it. I haven't mulched it. I haven't, done, I haven't protected it in the winter. Whoa. So it dies back in the winter, and then it comes back on its own. That's thriving on neglect up here in Pensacola. Yes, yes. I wow. haven't done that with the Okinawan spinach because um, I didn't have enough at the time to, to do that. But I'm, I'm going to do the same thing with this this year, and I'm sure it's going to react the same way as the longevity spinach does. This is Puerto Rican black bean that I actually got from Pete. <laughs> <laughs> we went to a food forest workshop with Eric Tonsmeyer in, um, in that area of Florida um, down about two and a half years ago. Yep. And uh, Pete was handing these things out. So we took some, and I've grown them out to increase my stock, and then they just sort of come back on their own. And they're great. They're beautiful black, purple black beans. Um, to eat fresh or you can dry them and they do great and they're great ground cover they're nitrogen fixer of course yeah. so they're um, perennial by me and they're perennial all the way up here they're coming well, back they're coming back cool I think they're mostly coming back from seed okay I don't right. think they're coming back from the root because hmm. um, what I see is little tiny plants little ones that coming start back off up. and I think I should pull you because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, it's fine when they're in the beds I don't care but when they get in the past like on the other side of that bed it's sort of like they're all through the past those two beds are sort of mingled together Wow. Um, 
So there's a lot of other stuff. Let's see. Um, so what do you do to keep the neighbors happy here? I mean, you feeding them or uh, just keeping it beautiful? Uh, yeah, I try to keep it neat. Um, not a, I'm not sure I always do that good job of that, but I try. So, so uh, I guess we <laughs> but should. But you know, that's why I mix some of the flowers, the dahlias, and the alyssum and things like that in here too. Yeah, they look great. Those. Now you said this is only about three years old, right? This section is only three years old. Actually, this this configuration is only a year old. But yeah, this section is only a couple, two or three years old. Wow, very yeah. young. So this was just grass a couple of years ago. This was a grass just like all my neighbors. Wow. Yeah, we finally put that one under mulch just last year. I was still having to mow that, and it's just, oh, I'm so thankful to not have to mow anymore. So you're really slowly developing the front yard here. It didn't yes. all just happen at once, okay? No, it, it didn't. It could have. It could have if we had the time to do it. We could have done it very quickly, actually. Wow. But we didn't have the time. Moringa, we planted a couple years ago. Um, it's been through two winters that we've had where I've had multiple freezes. Last year, it got down to 22 in my yard, and um, I just cut it down at the... Um, I just cut it down at the base um, so that the trunk doesn't get damaged and that seems to protect the root and keep all the energy in the root and you can see that front one um, it's got like five or six different branches coming off of it real multi stem yeah yeah the one in the back I didn't cut it down as soon as I should have and uh, it, it seemed to have gotten damaged by the um, by the freezes so I think it's essential to, to, to cut it down before it gets damaged by, by those, mm. that kind of um, freezing temperatures Wow, when I think North Florida, you don't think moringa, cassava, bananas, I mean, yeah. y'all are, uh, you're on the edge of the temperate and you're on the edge of the tropical here. I mean, yeah. really best well, of both worlds. Yeah, and the key is they die back in the winter and then they come back on their own. That's awesome. Yeah, so. Um, so you're not out here replanting this whole thing No, and year. I'm not covering stuff up and any of that. They're just, uh, they're on their own, pretty much. The only thing is the moringa, I do cut that back. The, well, I guess I do cut the, the cassavas back, but I don't have to. I just do it because they get dried and, and um, just to tidy up the place. So you're not doing a bunch of crazy frost protection out here. You're just letting this stuff kind of recover on its own, a little bit of cutting back. And... Yeah. Now, if we do have a crazy freezing temperatures like a couple years ago, we had what I call the January 2014 snow apocalypse, where we had the high one day of 31. That's not normal. We don't normally have day times where it's below freezing. Um, usually it's just nighttime. So um, if we have something like that again, I'm going to have to do something on my bananas. And I did... I only had the one uh, Namwa there at that time, um, but I did protect it. I had like a sleeping bag or something. I posted, you know, you tried. the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. And then we planted the banana circle after that. So this is a pea eggplant, and it's um, I use it a lot in Thailand. So the Thai people will use these. There's little tiny. You see how small they are. They are. And, they're very small. Yeah. So they they taste like an eggplant. They do have a little bit of a bitter flavor. Um, I love them. I adore them. I just think they're amazing, and I put them in everything I can. Any special recipes or anything for these? Uh, like any kind of Thai curry, green curry, okay. any, anything like that. Um, I have found a couple of recipes. I saw some things online where some folks in India were using it, and they were um, smashing them because they do have a lot of seeds in them. I, I just eat them whole. Um, but they were smashing them and sort of washing out like half the seeds and then mixing them with buttermilk and then drying them. It is thorny, so you want to keep it out of your pathways or you'll, you'll regret that. You know, this is a really old plant and it just keeps coming back and producing more fennel bulbs. Um, and lots and lots of them. Wow. Now this one is going to flower, I guess, because it's kind of hot still, but normally it'll actually produce a good... Right now. Yeah, it'll, yeah. Actually, it'll actually produce really good um, fennel bulbs that, that are not, these are going to flower, so they're kind of stretched out, but it'll produce really good ones and tons of them. Wow. Um, so yeah, like once you plant it, it's there for many years. How's the sugar cane do with the cold? Uh, yeah, it's the same thing, it freezes back. Um, what I usually like to do with the sugar cane is I'll break off the stem and um, actually this a couple years ago, I break off the stem and then bury it under the mulch. Like if we have mulch that's like three, four, six inches deep, okay. just shove it under the mulch right next to the ground. And then it, then next kind spring. Kind of overwintering it? Wow. Yeah, next spring. I don't know if I need to do that or not. I yeah. didn't do that with these and they just came back. Okay. Um, but the first, I think for the January 2014 cold, that's what I did to this and to the cassava. I just took those sticks and just shoved them in there and then they started popping up again. See this jicama back here. Um, and you're not supposed to let the flowers go because it takes the energy away from the root, but I do have a root forming here somewhere, right there. 
Ooh. And if I took the, um, if I had taken the time to take all the flowers off, then um, this would be a lot bigger. Bigger root, yeah. yeah. Nice. Moringa, cassava, sugarcane. You got a diverse front yard here. Yeah. So I'm seeing some diversity over here around these bananas. What is this? Uh, chaya and yams yeah. and hibiscus. Yeah, so I have a purple yam in here that's climbing up the, um, you can see it from here. Trellising up onto the yeah. bananas. There it is, yep. yep. Yep, that's climbed up over there and that's a purple yam. You can see it in the stem. Yeah. yeah. Um, and loquat. Nice. Uh, which is flowering well right now. Those consistently fruit pretty well up here? Yes. Okay. This is a new tree to me. We lost another tree. This is actually an Italian variety. I'm not sure I'm happy with it because the fruit split. It seems to me the fruit split easily. Hmm. I, I'm I much rather have just the regular, na not native, but the, the like unnamed one that we used to have. Yeah. Um, but the one in the backyard, I, I guess it got the fire blight, um, and it just died one one day. Surprised you guys are seeing that that far north. I've seen it a little bit down by us. Wow. I haven't seen it much. Okay. I haven't seen it much, um, but we do have it. Uh, we did have it for that one. Um, and that was great. I love that one. This one's supposed to have bigger fruit with smaller seeds, but if the fruit don't look good because they split, then I'm not sure I'm in love with that. But this year, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a lot of the excess fruit. You know, um, and I'm going to hope that's going to help. Um, cool. Yeah. And, and then we have Turk's Cap, which I have just discovered has edible flowers. Delicious. So I am thrilled about that. What's you growing on? Tell me about it. This one here? No. That one's pretty closed, you know, where when that tassel kind of just starts to stick its way out of there. Uh, okay. They seem to be the sweetest. Do I eat the green? No, no, you gotta get the, the what's inside of the green though, because that tends to be the sweetest part. So do I take this off or not? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Right there? Uh, yep, yep, you got it. Ooh, that is good. A little bit of sugar this morning, yeah, huh? pretty good, cool. yeah. Cool. Um, How's the chaya do? Does that take get set back by the cold? It does get set back by the cold. Um, and, um, but it grows great. Um, I've had this again, another plant that I planted very, very late. Um, normally it would be very tall and big and bushy. Um, but I just saw these, I had these in a pot. And I was like, I gotta do something with these. So I planted them out and, um, but I love this plant. You do have to cook it. You yes. cannot eat this raw. Um, it has cyanide in it and, uh, right, cyanide? Yeah. It has cyanide in it. So you have to cook it. And once you cook it, it's fine. It's absolutely good. And it's used in a lot of tropical countries. It has, it's, it's very tasty. It's very nutritious. And it practically grows itself all throughout the summer. I don't have to water it or, or anything. Um, so it does great. But normally it's much, much, much bigger. Is this yep. its first year in the ground? Yes, these cuttings. These cuttings, year. okay, yeah. nice. And they were put in probably in August. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they haven't had a lot of time to grow. They've just gotten it in the ground. Yeah, wow. yeah. Well, this, you said the area we're standing, some of this was grass recently? Or the corner by the road only? The corner by the road, yeah. Okay. This, this, this was grass too, but it was, um, it's been neglected. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been your key to success here, Renee? Uh, sheet mulching. Sheet mulching. Sheet mulching. The sheet mulching is the only thing that allows me to have, you know, I have limited time to do anything, and sheet mulching is the one thing that allows me to, to do what I can do. Um, I'd be battling weeds like crazy if I wasn't sheet mulching. Um, and um, you know, the other thing we do is reapplying mulch. You can't just do it one time. You gotta, I, I apply mulch like three times a year. Um, or if we're lucky, we find a whole bunch of mulch, put it on like wood chips and stuff you can put on like really thick three inches, leave it for a year. And the other thing is diversity. Diversity is really key because uh, the weather's being really weird. Um, we had a really hot kind of fall. We had a terribly rainy um, summer. Um, it's just everything is really weird. So some things that didn't do um, great last year are doing great now. And other things that did great last year are not doing great now. So the fact that I have so many different kinds of plants in here, um, something could be doing well, always. Um, and I uh, have some things that I may have to sort of help along or sort of, sort of let them go, but other things, are, there's always something that's doing really, really great. And uh, those are those are my big keys. So Renee, you, you do edible landscapes, you guys teach. Yes. I mean, you're doing a lot of cool things up here in the Pensacola yeah. area. How do people find you? I mean, wh where are you at? Okay, so uh, uh, where are we at? Well, we don't actually, I grow everything out of my out of my yard. I, uh, we sell plants. Um, we sell uh, vegetable and herb starts and other plants like that. And uh, I don't have a storefront, um, but we sell at the Palafox Market most um, most Saturdays and some other festivals. And our website is www.easthilledibleGardening.com. And you can see our, um, 
see our locations where we're going to be each week there. Um, we teach uh, gardening classes. We have a class called Easy Weed Free No-Till Organic Gardening that we've taught to over 480 people here in, uh, in the last three years. Um, and uh, you can find that. Yeah, you can find all that. We have a Facebook page too. Yeah, um, social media too. Okay. Yeah, so um, East Hill Edible Gardening. Uh, you can look that up on Facebook. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> cool, Renee. Thanks yeah. for showing us around your garden. Thanks. No, it's well, fun. We're going to see some more gardens, aren't we? We are. We got some great gardens to go look at. My friends Dwayne and Stephanie. And then uh, we're also going to look at Charles Busby and Joe Tavernides. Wow, I'm excited. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> What's up guys? So, you know, I'm in town here for some permaculture work and uh, when I first got called in on this project, Renee and Tom were kind of new at their business, uncomfortable taking on something of that scale and I'm actually going to probably bring them in on the project and work with them a little bit because I, I really, I do feel like they, they know what's going on. They're doing some great work up here and you, know, you all always ask me, you know, where are these other edible landscapers at? Where are these other people doing this type of work like me? And there is other people. They're starting to pop up. And I'm, I'm trying to find them. I'm trying to bring them to the table for you guys. I'm trying to make them, you know, more easily found, to, to say the least. So, you know, people like Tom and Renee need to be in every neighborhood. You know, this is what creates change. So, you know, please like their page. Please, you know, find them, support them. If you're up in the area, take one of their classes. If you're thinking about converting your front yard, I would say contact them. You know, they're, they're doing some really awesome work up here. So I hope you enjoyed this short video. Renee's gonna be with us the rest of the day. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share. Don't forget about pounding that subscribe button. Boom, pounder.